I am doing a terrible job <laughs> recording and documenting this for you guys, but I am having, we are having our first volunteer night where we've had people come and help us get ready for our big event on Saturday. So right now we're out here sorting tulip bulbs and getting, counting them out and getting them in their boxes so that we can put them at their beds to be planted on Saturday. I just got home from <sighs> the most incredible day. I am exhausted to my bones, exhausted, but wow, what worthy for the glory of God work happened today. So we have an event coming up and I have no idea when I'm going to get the chance to sit down and edit this. So I have no idea when you're going to see this video. I don't even fully know what this video looks like yet, but this coming Saturday, from when I'm talking to you, we have um, our first garden event. And it is, um, we're planting tulips and garlic. We're doing a dedication, a prayer, a whole thing. And um, we're kind of starting with the congregation because we're just slowly introducing the, the garden and the idea of the garden and trying to get people involved in it. And um, uh, we have other ideas to involve the community and whatnot. But this is mostly so far an event for our congregants. Um, and we sent out a form, uh, via QR code up on the screen during service last Sunday, and we've had almost 150 people RSVP that they're coming. That makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so excited, but that is terrifying. This is my first time with this. Okay. A lot of the people that work at the Father's House, I'm friends with them. They've been doing this a very long time. I've attended a lot of events as a congregant through the Father's House that my friends have put on, planned, uh, worked, etc. Um, this is my first time getting a look behind the scenes of what all goes into planning those things that you just get to go enjoy as a member of the church. Wow, is it a lot. Like, holy cannoli, this is crazy. The amount of logistics and planning and, oh, uh, my head is spinning. Um, luckily, I have um, Kim, who's the um, other person. I'm, eventually, I'll have you meet her. She's incredible. Um, and she's very familiar, has been doing this a very long time. So I'm really just following her lead on a lot of this stuff. But... Um, it's been a lot. And so tonight was the first night that we had the our, our volunteers come and help us. So you've got the people who are coming to the event on Saturday, and they are also volunteers. They're going to be planting garlic and tulips and beans and doing. they're going to be using wheelbarrows to move compost and all that good stuff. Um, and so they're volunteering as well, but they're volunteering, um, at, at an event, um, in, in an, in an event fashion. So then we've got the core team of volunteers, which are people that are kind of like on my team and they're regular. They're going to come and help out regularly. I can rely on them. I can call them and ask them to come help me with something, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so this was our first night tonight working with that core team. And it's not all put together yet. I think these are just a few of the players that we're going to have involved long term. And um, it was, wow, was it incredible. I've never worked with people in that capacity before as a leader. And I have <clears throat> I have very little leadership experience Um and so the Lord, it's just amazing to be give, given these opportunities to kind of be the one who communicates the plan and delegates the um, the the tasks and checks in and, and, and gets to talk and get to know people and work with them. And, oh, it was just, it was amazing. I loved every second of it. But I worked almost 12 hours today up at the church. I got 16,000 steps, my watch said. I am so tired. But I think we're doing good. I think the event on Saturday is going to be really wonderful, and I'm stoked about it. I'm so excited. So I, um, I'm going to I'm going to hopefully get some footage of the event on Saturday, but obviously I'm working it, so I, I don't know how much footage I'll be able to get, um, but hopefully some because I'd love for you to see it. And, uh, yeah. Ben and I are here at 
the church. It's the day before our big event and there's so much to do and I look a mess. I need to take a shower, but I figure I'm about to do a bunch of dirty stuff, so I'll wait till afterwards. <laughs> um, they have asked me to speak um, at this event. Huh, so we are skipping. <laughs> All right, they've asked me to speak. Um, and I had a feeling when I took this job that there was going to be some speaking involved sometimes because it's a church <laughs> and, and they all know that I have a YouTube channel. Like everybody here knows that I have a YouTube channel. So I was like thinking to myself when I accepted this job, at some point, someone's going to put me on a stage and make me say something. <sighs> and I've known that, but I've just been like keeping my mind open because I want the Lord to use me however he wants to use me. And so they did. They asked me if I would speak at this event tomorrow. And um, luckily, I don't have to be spiritual or anything like that because I am such a baby Christian still. So I don't want to try to share a message on stage. And I'm practicing with you guys. All of my devotional videos are me, you know, developing my language and figuring out how I want to speak. And I, anytime I speak about the Lord, I want to represent him well. So I don't feel ready to do that. No, they want me to um, share the planting instructions out loud for everybody. They also have them printed at their stations, but so that's fine. I created the instructions, so I'm fine sharing them. They're my words. Um, I've never even spoken into a microphone before in my life. Um, we were using megaphones. I don't know how this works. How do you talk into it? Cause this is, I think where batteries go. I also don't even know where we keep batteries here. I'd like to practice with this before I have to do it tomorrow. These just came in the mail. How do you talk into it? Where's the input? Oh, 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 this is the input. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. <laughs> All right, I gotta figure out where we keep batteries so I can practice. So the very first time I'm talking into that thing, <clears throat> it's not in front of 150 people tomorrow. What do you think, Ben? We got work to do, huh? We got so much to do today. He's my little helper. <clears throat> He's my little helper. You've come with me to help. Poor Ben. Tom and I have been working so much that Benny has been spending more time at home than he's used to being. Uh, by himself, I mean. Uh, because previously I would really more work during the evening and Tom would work during the day. So there was always one of us home. Most that's been most of his life, but I've just been so busy. I've not been home as much. So I've been trying to bring him with me everywhere I can take him. <clears throat> and so we're going to be mostly outside today. So, but I wanted to just give you a super, uh, we'll go outside in just a second. I wanted to give you a super brief rundown on what we're doing I've been filming so sporadically and I apologize. I, several of you, many of you actually have reached out to me in one way or another. Some of you I've even met in person and have been like, I love your videos about the church garden. This is so exciting. I look forward to updates. I wait for updates. And that is so encouraging to me and I love to hear that, but I've been doing such a disservice to you guys because these updates have been so infrequent and I'm not doing a great job consistently gathering footage because I'm just living it. Like I'm trying to get through it <laughs> and I'm trying to do a good job and be really focused and pay attention. So I haven't been, the, my first thought is not to get my phone or my camera out, you know, but it, I should do better. So I'm, I'll work on that. But um, this event, so what we're doing right now is we are having our garden dedication event tomorrow. We've invited everyone to come and like dedicate the garden with us. So we're going to do this like beautiful prayer and dedication. And I think we're actually even cutting a ribbon, I'm pretty sure. And then we are planting garlic, garlic cloves and tulip bulbs. Um, those were strategic um, uh, uh, crops because you can plant them in the fall and they sprout in the spring. And, um, we've been wanting to really garner like momentum and excitement and get people like looking forward to something with the garden. So for us to christen it more or less this fall and get people out there and get their hands in the dirt. Um, and then to see the, the fruit of that in the springtime, I think will really help, like get people excited. Uh, at least that was the idea. So, 
Um, we've got roughly 2,500 tulip bulbs and roughly 700 plus cloves of garlic that we are planting. And look what I've got on my desk right here. This is more kind of the, so this is an overhead shot of the garden that we took uh, with our drone. And you can't, see, you can't see in green, I've got them all numbered and I've got them all labeled. So um, this is the parking lot. So all of these are going to be tulips. All of these are going to be garlic. And then all the rest are going to be beans. I don't have any out here anymore. I took them to the trailer. Um, and that actually is thanks to Jess from Roots and Refuge. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what I want to do for cover crop because I don't want to leave all of these beds uncovered all winter. At first we were going to do straw, but I couldn't find a source of straw that hadn't been sprayed. And we're really trying to do this like free from all natural, um, not really using the word organic because we're not going to certify. But um, so I didn't love that idea. I really wanted to do leaf mulch, but we only have a few trees. <laughs> um, and so I don't, didn't think we were going to be able to make enough of it ourselves. And then I couldn't find, I was going to, we were going to buy it. I couldn't find anybody selling it around here. Um, I had a lot of people suggest like wheat or rye or clover, but then that would have to be cut down or tilled in the springtime. And I didn't want to do that for 80 beds. Um, so I was like, what are we going to do? And then, um, Jess had been talking about beans in one of her videos. And so I ordered a bag of 8,000, um, aqua dolce fava beans, which are supposed to be a bean that you can plant in the fall time. I'm hoping we can get at least a little bit of a sprout out of it. Um, any growth that we can get out of it at all would be great. And hopefully that will kind of help amend and cover the soil a little bit. I know that it's still not going to be great, um, but we're not finished with these beds anyway. In fact, several of these are um, still just the rough dirt um, from our ground that we used to um, put it as a base layer. Um, <clears throat> a few of these are still like that. So it's not going to hurt my feelings or anything if, if, you know, it doesn't work out that way. But it'll still be really fun to give the kids a handful of beans and have them punch those in the dirt and, um, and get hopefully something out of it. So that was what we ended up going with on that front. And if you guys have any suggestions for me for cover crops that we could do this late in the season, let me know. That's the hard part too, is there's so much to plan and so many logistics, and then you have to fit it into the time frame that you've, you're given as well. So it's just, it's tricky and I'm learning how to navigate that. Um, and yeah, I, I prayed about it and thought about it and researched it. And I never came up with like a solution where I was like, yes, that. <laughs> the beans are kind of like an attempt, you know? So let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for that. And then also if you're, if you would think, if your answer would be wheat or rye, how does one go about getting rid of it or clover in the springtime without it being incredibly time and labor intensive? Let me know, please. So yeah, we're planting all of that tomorrow and we've got it all nice and organized. I'm about to Ben, are you already done? Are you already finished? Huh? You don't want to work anymore? We haven't even started. <laughs> um, I'm about to go out to the trailer where we've got everything for tomorrow so that I can do a few more tasks. And since I haven't taken you with me for any of the other tasks, I'll take you with me for those. Here's the trailer <laughs> where we're keeping everything for now. So I'll give you an example. Here's a tulip box. This is the tulip that's in this box. Each box has 120 tulip bulbs, planting instructions, a plaque, and a Sharpie where we want people to write their names 
and a garden trowel. That is for tulips and let's see, here's a garlic one. So each punnet has 11 cloves and then there's the same thing over here. This is the hose setup. So that we can water everything. And the beds, I did not film any of this. I should have, but we had a crew come out, a crew of guys and they leveled out the dirt that was like mounded up in there and smoothed it out. And then we ordered just some screened topsoil from a local company and they um, filled them with that. I purposely didn't have them fill them all the way up for two reasons. There's gonna be compost added to these from that pile there and that pile there tomorrow, day of, that, that our volunteers are gonna be doing. Um, and then also I never fill my beds up all the way the first year um, because it gives me lots of room to amend and do whatever I want to do, add as time goes on, saves you money. Plants only need six inches max to grow in, so you don't have to fill your beds all the way up. These are going to be garlic beds as you can see here. So we will be able to get everything out of the trailer tomorrow. Um, me and Kim and the other volunteers are going to be here early to set up. And then, hey, where's Ben? Ben? Oh, you're, you are where I was just headed, Ben. <laughs> um, this is our stage. <laughs> this is our stage. They wanted, I don't know whose idea this was, but they wanted the tractor as the backdrop. So they put a table out. And the table's being anchored by the, these things, whatever that is, forks or whatever from the tractor. So it's stable. And uh, me and Kim were out here standing on it yesterday, trying to get a feel for what it feels like to be on it. And this is what we're going to be talking from. <laughs> Isn't that funny? This is an example of a bed that is going to have beans planted in it. And the soil is really rough and coarse. And this is just base, base soil that came from our uh, ground here. Um, so we're going to plant beans in it and it's all right if nothing happens, but hopefully we get a little something out of them, a little bit of growth. So one of the tasks that I have to accomplish today, two things that I have to accomplish today, we are only planting half of the garlic beds. So half, uh, half this way. Um, where the sign is, we'll plant the front half because these are the beds that are gonna have the arch trellises. So I'm planting something else on the other side and garlic isn't harvested until, what is it, like early July? I'm trying to remember, July, I think. Um, and so we've had to be really strategic when figuring out what we're gonna plant where to keep in mind how long it's going to be there so that I can plan other things to go in those beds. The tulips, we're going really big. We're planting 20 beds with tulips because they bloom in like April, May. And so I can have those pulled out and those beds turned over in time for me to plant something in them in May. Um, so I wasn't as concerned about that. We could plant them all out in tulips if we wanted to, but garlic, we needed to be more strategic because it's in there longer. And so we're planting half beds. So we're planting 16 half beds of garlic. So I have to come out and figure out, do I wanna do cardboard? Am I gonna put down? What am I gonna do so that people know to only plant half of the bed? Um, we have a bunch of cardboard. So I think I'm probably just gonna put down cardboard and like maybe write, do not, do not move cardboard, do not plant under cardboard, something like that. The other thing is um, we are using chalk to mark out planting lines. Um, for the gar uh, for the tulips, we are doing 10 rows of 12, I think. 
And what are we doing for the garlic? I have to sit down and think about the math. So I'm gonna mark those lines out with chalk so that people have a planting guide because that's the thing when you involve the community, inexperienced gardeners, you wanna get people out here and in the dirt. And I, and I do, I want that. But also we, we are trying to plant this for productivity as well for we wanna actually get produce out of it. So there does need to be, it can't just be madness. They can't just be sticking things in the ground anywhere. It has to have some semblance of organization and, and order. So um, that's the goal. I'm hoping by putting the chalk lines, um, people will be able to follow those at least roughly and get something, some semblance of order. But that's a lot because we're planting 36 beds, 20 tulip and 16 garlic. So I have to mark all of those with chalk lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my tape measure out and figure out what those look like so I can get a system down so I can just go through them really quick. Here's what I did with my chalk fingers. Um, so I, I just picked a bed and I got started and I made oh, lines. Can you even see that? Yeah, lines. Um, using my tape measure and figuring out how, where I wanted it to start, where I wanted them to fall, what, what would make the most sense for planting and then how far apart they're going to be, yada, yada. So I've got lines there and I've got lines, you, I'm sure you can hardly see it, but they're there too. And then what I did, because I don't want to have to take the tape measure to all 20 of these, I got a piece of tape, painter's tape, and I put the marks on the piece of tape and also marked where I folded over the sides here so that it goes in the same spot on each bed. And then I can just mimic the lines on all the beds. Being on this project has really helped me develop my critical thinking skills. <laughs> because I feel like at home in my garden, I just kind of do the first thing that comes into my brain. And if it's hard, it doesn't matter because it's my time and it's my garden. Um, but here I'm really trying to be more efficient. I'm trying to think of ways to make things work better, <laughs> smarter, not harder. Um, yeah, so that's that's been good for my character development. But yeah, that'll work, I think. Um, and then I, I will do it for the other side too, the longer side. But I'm just going to go through and mark all 20 of them on the short side first, and then I'll do the long side. I've just marked all, well, almost all of the tulip line. I've got two more beds, I think. But it was a lot of bending over, and that really hurt my back. So now I'm laying... Playing with me? Getting some rest? Hmm. What is it? Me too. I'm tired. I still have to do all the garlic lines. No, I don't want kisses. I don't want them. It's the day of the event. It's the morning of, we are out here setting up and it already looks so good. I was saying that I think it looks like a workshop. Like it looks like you would show up to like, um, like, like a workshop event where you were going to like learn something or you're gonna participate in, in, in learning something or doing something, you know? Um, yeah, I think that's what it looks like. It just looks so good. Let me show you what, what we have going on in each bed. So this is a tulip bed. So we've got the bucket for them to go get their compost. We've got each bed labeled with a picture of what's there. And then in the buckets, we put these together the other night on our volunteer night. We've got the bulbs all counted out. We've got the instruction sheet, the metal plaque for people to write their names on and their little garden trowel. So we're going to start by all standing in here we've got the stage back there that i showed you guys we're going to do our prayers and our dedications and whatnot and then we're going to dismiss everybody to go find a bed and to get started and then over here we're getting set up with oh those clouds look a little dark um we've got um donuts and cider and i'm gonna go get coffee here in a minute gloves over there under the orange tent yeah it's gonna be great as long as it doesn't rain. Hello, what are you doing? Sun's over here. Yo, Jaylee. Hi. Today's your day. I'm feeling so excited. <laughs>
These are some of the members of this church. That's Carlos there with the sunglasses. We've got Isaac, he leads worship. Josh and CJ are pastors. Well. We're over oh, here, yeah. this is so exciting. Know that God is doing something not just in the soil of our hearts but in the soil of this soil us together and I was saying to the um, as an artist I was saying just imagine you know as we gather together and we pray and we start this can you imagine what the creator what creator God took the soil put it in his hand breathed his breath into it and formed us now we're taking the soil in our hands alongside him and we are going let's plant some crops that will feed some people let's plant some tulips that will nurture the hearts of those who wouldn't normally have some tulips scale from 10 so you ready let's do it come on 10 9 Oh, you guys are pushing those in really far. Good. Good job. That looks amazing. Bless you. Nice. Um, tulip one is over there. Garlic one is over there. Guys, this is looking so good. Nice, that's looking so pretty. That compost is good, good and dark. I know, right? Yeah, that's nice looking. Oh my gosh, guys, look how nice and neat that looks. That looks amazing. <laughs> That's probably the prettiest one I've seen. Very nice. event is over. I'm out here by myself cleaning up. <sighs> wow. <sighs> I'm just kind of reflecting. Um, there were two things that stood out to me. First, Somebody came up to me. I was um, kind of walking. After I did my main thing with the megaphone up on the stage, I got down and I was just kind of walking around and I was supporting, answering questions, talking to people, meeting people, because that was the first time that I was introduced. They introduced me. Like, this is Jaylee, she's the garden person. <laughs> um, and so I was meeting people. People were saying hello to me. We've got members of this church that have been 
decades going to this church. And so um, a lot of them were coming and saying hi to me. And that was really nice. Um, I was answering questions. This one person came up to me and I can tell that he was, he's somebody who has been going here a long time because a lot of people were greeting him. So clearly people know him. And I, but I've never met him. And he came up to me and he said, this is, you're doing a great job. This is a great event. And I also just want to note that you have a very calm and encouraging energy. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like what? And he was like, no, you know, you could be walking around here very militant. You have to plant this, this far apart. That's not right. Change that. And he was like, and you're just very calm. And I was like, yeah, because getting it right isn't exactly the point. I mean, we want to be close and hence all of my efforts and directing, you know, leaving directions and drawing the, the, the guides on the beds and trying to make it as easy as possible for there to be some order. But the point is that people are out here enjoying it and they're having their own experience with God and with the garden. And I, I don't want to come out here and be militant. He was like, well, it comes across, you know, really good. I was like, wow, thank you. So there was that and I really appreciated that. That was so encouraging for me having that. That This was my, not only was this my first time like public speaking, but this was also my first event here at the garden. Um, so that was really nice. And then the other thing, we have a big um, sign language community here in Rochester, New York. There's a lot of people here who sign. And um, so we have uh, our own interpreter and um, he was here because there were some people here who um, sign. And um, somebody came up to me and asked me a question about the beans. And as I started to answer, um, the person, one, I think there were two people who sign pointed at me. And so he came over with them and started inter like signing what I was saying. He was signing what I was saying. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that before. You know, he's up there on Sundays, like signing the service. And he was signing what I was saying about beans. <laughs> it was, I don't know why it just like hit me. And then, and then the second thought I had was like, because it put a little bit of a spotlight on what I was saying because somebody else was repeating it back. Um, so it made me aware of my words. And I thought, no, I, I got this. Like, I know this stuff. Like it's gardening. I know gardening. I know, I know about these beans and I know about the tulips and the garlic and the, the soil and what we're doing and the why I know it. I know it. I know it. So it just gave me this, like this quiet confidence. Like you got this, like, you know what you're talking about. And it just, oh, I'm sitting in the Husky and it's starting to rain. How special. I don't think you'll be able to see it. It's not raining hard and the sun's out over here. It feels so good to be out here by myself. <sighs> well, anyway, um, this event was a huge success and I kept asking, I would go up to people, are you, did you have a good time? Was that fun? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, 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 this is awesome. I'm so glad you guys are doing this, yada, yada. So it felt, it felt good felt good and I just I kept I kept having these moments where I'm like wow all of these people are out here gardening all of these people are out here with their hands in the dirt they've got their kids out here young old <laughs> we were all just out here together planting seeds mm. So good. I'm so lucky to be a part of this. I'm so honored to be a part of it. Well, thanks for following along, guys. Sorry I didn't get like the best footage of this whole process. This was my first event, as I've said now. And so I was just very in it and wasn't really focused on the filming, but I need to do better with that because um, it means a lot to me that so many of you are following along. And so I want to honor that and give you good footage. So I'll try to do better from now on. But uh, hope you enjoyed what I did get. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith and keep moving forward. Bye friends.